Can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay, so you can. Uh, first, our basic mission for the Coalition for Civil Freedoms is to advocate for the rights of political prisoners who were targeted in the war on terror. So I'm going to start with the beginning and tell you how we got our start. And it's going to be from my point of view. There's lots of different points of view of this one. But my first exposure to all of this was in Tampa, Florida, when one of my colleagues at the University of South Florida was charged with terrorism. And this was Dr. Samuel Arian, who was tenured, highly respected, award-winning, etc. But he was also a political activist working quite effectively for the rights of Palestinians. So Friends of Human Rights was formed to advocate for him at that time. Uh, he was in pretrial in solitary confinement for two and a half years. So almost every day, his wife Nala and I took a nice walk along the Hillsborough River, and she told me what was happening to him in prison, and I, I could not believe it. I was shocked. So this was all new to me then, and um, this is before he had a trial, and things like he was strip searched every time he entered or left his cell. It, his treatment was unbelievable. And the six month trial was equally shocking. Uh, I was there every day, and it was really a theater of the absurd. And if it hadn't been real, it would have been funny. It was that absurd. And the jury agreed, and they were unanimous that Sammy was not a terrorist. But because two of the jurors did not want to completely acquit him, the government was able to continue its vendetta against him, and it was seven more years before he obtained his freedom. So there was a Norwegian filmmaker, Lene Halverson, made an excellent film about the trial called USA versus Alarian. And my partner and I took this film around the country, and in the process, we learned that Sammy was not the only one that this was happening to. In every town, we met people who had a loved one who had been unjustly imprisoned. So at about the same time, the people who now make up our legal team, Steve Downs and Kathy Manley, were involved in another very unjust case against Yasin Araf, who was an imam in Albany, New York. He and his co-defendant, Mohammed Hossein, were entrapped by an FBI informant in a fabricated case. And Project Salam was formed there to advocate for these two men. Now, Steve and Kathy also started investigating, and they were also struck by the large number of unjust arrests around the country in terrorism cases. So in 2010, uh, Sammy was on house arrest. He brought his Friends of Human Rights, Project Salam, and 16 other organizations together in his daughter's apartment where, and where she had custody of her father. And the Coalition for Civil Freedoms was born. And at the time, it was called the National Coalition to Protect Civil Freedoms. So after 9-11, the FBI was tasked with preventing the next terror attack. And so they started looking for terrorists everywhere. And one of their early targets were influential people, particularly those who advocated for Palestine. So an example of that type of case was Sammy's case, and the hope was to silence him. Another similar case was the Holy Land Five. So the Holy Land Foundation was the largest Islamic charity in the United States at the time. And some of their charity went to help people in Palestine. And so, of course, that had to be stopped. And it took two trials, but they managed to convict them. The two co-founders, Ghassan Alashi and Shukri Abu Bakr, who were 50 years old at the time, were both convicted and sentenced to 65 years in prison. So this amounts to a life sentence. And these were two very good men taken out of, out of commission for us. Yeah. So it, it turned out that these early terrorists were very hard to find, so the FBI had to get creative. Uh, one popular way to find terrorists is to send informants into mosques to befriend vulnerable people, usually young men, and goad them into saying something stupid and recording these things to play to a jury later on. So there were several cases in Tampa early on. Uh, one of those was a classic entrapment case. Uh, Sammy Asmakak was a young man who was mentally ill and very vulnerable. So informants sent by the FBI befriended him, got him a job, gave him money, bought him food, and they started goading him into a terrorist plot. So these informants planned everything, and Sammy did nothing. They put an AR-15 into his hands, 
and they filmed him swearing allegiance to al-Qaeda. They showed that film to the jury, and the jury convicted him. So, and he was sentenced to 41 years and for speech, basically. Yeah. Uh, Sammy's immigrant family, who had been doing very well with a successful bakery and a house, but they lost everything in paying for the lawyer. And I, the last two points I wanted to make, uh, this ongoing war and terror kicked into high gear after 9-11. And now the genocide in Gaza is providing another rationale for depriving people of their civil rights. As FBI Director Ray recently said that this will increase domestic radicalization for years to come, that our biggest threat is homegrown terrorists. And that, by that he meant Americans. So now they're looking for terrorists on college campuses, among the people who are opposed to genocide, on the streets, among people again who are out protesting. And informants are continuing to infiltrate mosques looking for idealistic but easily influenced young people in order to manufacture even more terrorist plots. So our coalition has a database with over 1,000 cases like this, entrapment and preemptive prosecution of very vulnerable and naive people turned out to be an easy way for the FBI to look like they were doing something to keep us safe. But of course, None of these people were dangerous, and it's not keeping us safe. The true danger is the loss of civil liberties. Now, most of the cases in our database involve Muslims, but not all of them do. We are all at risk.